Alright, Piro has made another stupid video. And he's used his little time code tool, which he is demonstrating to be just a useless piece of shit, I guess, if this is how it's going to be used. He, um, yeah, he used it to take one tiny clip from my video to Professor Anton and uh, play it, and then he told his little story of his, um, you know, brain surgery, which is not an insignificant amount, uh, I mean, uh, 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 event, but he described it as, as less dramatic than I could describe uh, a typical migraine headache I've had in the past. I mean, he described it as almost it was a ride at the theme park or something. Um, so, I mean, I thought that was a little bit funny. So anyway, I'm not going to play it, because yeah, it's just a description of his old life trauma. And um, so apparently we're supposed to have some sort of contest. Um, but anyway, the point is, is, when I was talking to Professor Anton, I said, "Where you know, I don't see your brain surgery scar. That was a response to his contextualization, or, or his argument, that um, the suffering we're talking about amounts to thorns in the paws of puppies. That when we say the word suffering, that's what we're talking about, is thorns in the paws of puppies. We're not talking about chemotherapy or Alzheimer's or migraine headaches or, um, oh, you know, you know, there's just so many colitis, you know, there's so many just horrible conditions that people have to live with. Shitworms, I mean, do you want shitworms? I don't know. I mean, I, I would pay big money not to have shitworms. <laughs> I really would. Um, so, yeah, this is just such bullshit. And it, it ignores, the, the number one, it ignores the fundamental argument where, where if we put this thing in front of you, not behind you, but we put it in front of you, um, you know, would you accept it as the price for the day after? Um, if you knew exactly what was coming, um, if we spelled it all out for you, every bit of it, and, uh, you know, that's the one question. The second question would be, yeah, if you had to do it over again, including that experience, would you do it? Um, and the third argument is, well, there's four, five, six, seven. I mean, again, we're not surveying you at the end of your life. We're surveying you in the middle of your addiction, um, which is kind of pointless. But the bottom line is it doesn't matter anyway, because, yes, subjectively, your psychology says it's worth it. You think there's true value in the mountain you're climbing, and if your toes freeze off, if your nuts freeze off, you'll accept it as the price of the big fun. Now, the typical person doesn't go mountain climbing. They have no urge to go mountain climbing. And they certainly wouldn't do it if there was a risk that their nuts would freeze off. They would say, that is fucking insane. They wouldn't even go near it. I mean, I won't even ride a bicycle because I'm not going to fuck with my nuts. Okay, but obviously some people, it's an obsession. It's their obsession. they got to do it. And so it means more to them than their toes or their nuts. You know, and that's just them. Um, yeah, so you have to concede that there is this subjective element to this perception of the strength of the addiction versus what you're willing to pay for it and how, how much you are committed to the idea of it even. Like, you know, a, a lot of the addiction kind of depends on the fact that you have the illusion that it's real. But once you kind of know it's just an optical illusion, once you know it's kind of just fake, um, yeah, you can disengage it pretty easily. It's pretty easy to overcome it then. And um, so, yeah, that's sort of my argument, that knowledgeable people understand that their childish anticipations, that that whole playing life the emotional way, um, you, you know, in terms of their want and need, they understand that, oh, yeah, all that want-need stuff is pretty lame. Um, and the real value is in the harm thing and avoiding the harm thing. So again, you've just eliminated. You've, you've just you've just glossed over the real argument here. And, and again, the the uh, the fifth argument is again the imposition argument, and that goes to the subjectively. You have this assumption that somehow the people who have a whole different sensibility than yours are somehow wrong, and somehow they need to be modified to be more like you people who want to pay this price for life, who find it acceptable to have seizures and brain tumors and and go through this nonsense. 
and somehow we're the ones that are broken and we don't have a right to protest and say don't put us back on this stupid idiotic ride don't shove this ugly food in our mouth because it looks like shit to me um, I could give an example of that I, mean, I was working yesterday in the house you know sh doing seams on sheetrock on a ceiling and the guy was cooking eggs and, and like bacon or I didn't even look in the pan because I would have puked but um, it's just an obnoxious smell to me. Obnoxious. So here's something that's, you know, totally somebody really loves to eat this shit. And for me, it's it's painful to have to smell it. It's actually painful um, to have to endure it. And you're just not appreciating that. You're saying that this game is worth playing. It's worth imposing on other people. And you say, I should, you, you're okay giving people license to impose it. To say, I don't care whether you find it repulsive. I'm going to impose it on you. Tough shit. Because I think it's really neato. And that's all you've got, is I think it's really neato. I think it's worth a brain surgery. Um, so anyway, but yeah, again, my argument was with Professor Anton and his lifestyle and his analogy that suffering amounts to ten puppies with thorns in their paws. And that's what I'm worried about the future enduring. That all the suffering that's going to be endured in the future by sentient creatures only amounts to ten puppies with thorns in their paws. Um, so I really didn't need you to explain your surgery. I need Professor Anton to explain to me how he can tell me he has any kind of respect for pain and suffering if he's going to analogize pain and suffering in the world as ten puppies with thorns in their paw. All right, <clears throat> um, so that's just bullshit. And so now I'll read some of your commenters, but I mean, it's just this bullshit. Now now we're going to have to have a pain contest, you know. Um, <clears throat> I mean, that shit from Uranus, I think he's the asshole. Um, there are, there's a whole bunch of them that are assholes. <laughs> but, um, well, anyway, you talked about my insensitivity. Um, you know, that like somehow I need to have brain surgery. Well, yeah, I didn't have brain surgery. But I did have a stroke, and I've talked about that, so I'll talk about that. I'm not going to talk about everything I've gone through in my life, but yeah, I did have a stroke. And um, yeah, it didn't last for a week, and it wasn't just over in a week. No, it was months, and then for months I had to um, repetitively relearn how to use my parts again on my right side. And I can tell you it was incredibly unpleasant. I mean, it seems like a simple task, you know, just writing your name or squeezing a ball. But it was incredibly tedious. It, it, was, it, was, it was nauseatingly tedious to have to do it. Uh, okay, so I paid, I, I, yeah, the stroke was nothing. Yeah, but the three months after the stroke was something. It was really, really unpleasant to have to every day force myself to, 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 to push the the nausea to the edge to try to get one more squeeze out of that fucking ball um, so I had some hope of getting my functionality back uh, because if I didn't get it back quick I wasn't going to get it back um, so yeah I, but I wouldn't yeah I wouldn't what, 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 what am I going to put on the other side of the scale and say oh yeah let's do that again that was fun you know uh, this this trivial pursuit of some sort of glory moments in my life uh, well, well, I could how I could fuck a Harley, Hollywood starlet and have one night of blissful joy. What the hell? Where do I put that on the pile? There's no happily ever after pyro here. So if, yeah, if you were buying some kind of real thing that was lasting, something that actually endured, something that actually could could stand up to the test of time, well then maybe this shit would be worth it. But we don't. We buy a fleeting moment of a little bit of comfort. And it's all psychological crap. Okay, we're happy or sad because of a psychological disposition um, created by a desire mechanism. You're completely owned and operated by a DNA molecule. Uh, and you're glorifying it. And you're glorifying paying a price for it. You're, you're actually glorifying it's, it's just like somebody defending the lottery. You're just saying, oh yeah, well all those people enjoying the, the fun and thrill of watching themselves lose. <laughs> you know, the anticipation, you know, of the theft. You know, it's a, a joyful slavery is all you're talking about. 
You're just talking about, you know, using some narcotic, some Kool-Aid to give the slaves some Kool-Aid so they enjoy their slavery. Um, that's all you're describing here. It's just bullshit. Um, so anyway, yeah, one guy did talk about his, you know, cancer surgery and how he wouldn't do that shit over again. Um, so that was pretty nice and honest. And yeah, there's some snarky people here. So yeah, there's no point in reading this shit, I suppose. Um, I just want to get to the, the asshole. I mean, he's got to be here somewhere, right? <clears throat> I did see the comments. Well, I'll go to the bottom and start from there. That's probably where it is. Uh, bottom of this list, anyway. Well, I guess I should have maybe, uh, did that, um, whatever you call that. Um, by whatever. Uh, Gary knows as much about suffering as he cares about suffering. Fuck all. So, so how do you know what I've experienced in my life, asshole? I, I mean, really. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, it's not my obligation to explain it to you. Um, but it has absolutely nothing to do with the argument. The argument is, is why would I impose it on somebody else? Why would I, how can I possibly assume that if I had a child, they wouldn't find what I enjoy eating to be grotesque and repulsive? Why would I impose that kind of sickness on somebody? That sick, horrible feeling? For what? For what mission? For what end? What, 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 by what logic would I assume they would have the same appreciation and want to climb Mount Stupid and Mount Moron and Mount Silly Person and Mount Feudal and Mount, um, you know, Pink Balloon and Mount Unicorn? And Mount, oh, we're accomplishing something because we're silly, fucktarded humans and we put scarves on our head and talk about accessorizing and we make silly little jokes and we go laughy, 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 laugh. So we, we, we climb Mount Laffy Laffy with the twit from Uranus. Exactly, a twit from Uranus. And um, we, we, we climb little Mount Laffy Laffy. And, and, and why, why would you assume that every human born would be that stupid? That's silly, uh, you know, that owned by a DNA molecule, that retarded, uh, okay, you're a fucker, um, and whatever this is, um, he does care a lot about his own suffering, i.e. the suffering of an overgrown child that can't get uh, everything it wants. What I want is immunity from your disgusting, dirty fingers. I want freedom. Uh, from the liability of being vulnerable to your insanity. I don't want to be fodder for your game playing, you fucking twit. I'm not a, I'm not a little pickaxe that you use to climb your idiotic mountain with. I'm not a, a chain or a rope or a tie or whatever you call all that bullshit that you shitheads use as your little hardware. Um, yeah, I don't want to return and have to look at your cunt ugly face. Which you don't show anyway, but you've got to be cunt ugly. That's just no doubt about it. Uh, so he makes some other, oh, raw burrito, another asshole. I'm still waiting for the antinatalists to just kill themselves and spare us the misery of listening to their bullshit. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's a real great argument. Brilliant again. Why don't you argue the bullshit if it's bullshit? If you know it's bullshit. Why don't you make an argument? Well, yeah, that's right. You can't make an argument. All you say is something like, chicken is yummy. Fuck wit. Um, so, whatever. Um, all right, here, Pyro. These people need to stop saying I'm imposing existing on them as I am not their parents. Again, this is just such a lame excuse, Pyro. You roll a set of dice. You don't roll control. Okay, there's no way you had control over what you were rolling. Anything could have been the product of your childbirthing experiment. Okay, it certainly could have been somebody of a different disposition than your current children have at this current time. And you don't even know what they're going to mature into and what their opinions might be later in life. And they certainly might find your cavalier, reckless attitude quite obnoxious and abhorrent. Um... If they are dissatisfied, would you give them a knife and say, well, go ahead, shove it in my fucking heart? <laughs> you know, um, would you have the balls to do it? Not that that would help any, um, because obviously it's going to be a prejudice. 
you guys are telling you guys are telling you that I'd have been better off not to live. Well, look, the, the, the theory is, is that there's a, like we could say it to, like a, a retard could live a life and think it's accomplishing something, but yeah, it lives a horrible, dismal, awful life, and yeah, it just knows how to say, I'm a very good driver, and my life is super cool, and that's all it knows how to say, and it's just saying it, it doesn't understand it, it's just saying it, and so yeah, somebody could say that you would have been better off dead, they're entitled to their opinion, because all you did was create more suffering than you could ever possibly um, satisfy, more deprivation. And certainly by having children, you've made your life even a larger liability. So I could certainly argue it would have been better off if Pyro was never born, um, because Pyro is, you know, just creating a more liability. He's creating more potential for more harm, more colitis, more cancer, more suffering, more tears, more anguish, more anxiety. Um, all the negatives that can be part of life and because he has an infinite exchange rate where he, as long as something's in the past it doesn't matter how much it costs um, yeah it's just the idea is getting through everything it doesn't matter whether it makes any sense it doesn't matter whether it's a logical equation just keep buying your lottery tickets lotteries are fun 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 for everyone um, it's just disgusting and I disagree the only remaining question is who's uh, opinion about my life carries more weight, mine or yours. Again, it's not about your life, Pyro. Again, you just don't get it. We've been talking about procreation. You keep talking about your life. Um, we keep talking about your decision to reproduce, to do a biological experiment that put me at jeopardy again. And that's the fact of the matter. When you rolled those dice, they could have turned up whatever number is Gary. That's what they could have turned up. And you took that chance. And there's all these other people it could have been. Somebody with higher sensibilities, different sensibilities. They didn't like your food. They didn't like your house. They didn't like the color of your walls. They didn't like anything about this world you threw them into. And that could have been the realistic prospect of your fucking experiment. Um, they could have been born with their brain outside their head. They could have been born autistic. They could have been born in a horrible, awful circumstance. And you keep pretending that no one has a right to speak for those victims. That nobody has a right to say those people would have been better off not to have existed. And you had no right to impose on them with your reckless experimentation. And you just keep running from that argument by saying, I got lucky, therefore I don't have to account for the losses. Which is no better than a winner in the lottery saying, well, I don't see what's so bad, I made a million dollars. So it must be a good thing. And just ignoring the losers, just ignoring the real risk that existed and, and the real harm that's done to millions of people who waste their, their um, rent money on, on hope and, and preposterous daydreams. Um, fuck you, you suck. Um, so anyway, what else is here? I mean, again, I mean, it's, there's no real point, though, in describing to me some, some horror that you went through when you don't describe it as much of a horror. I mean, really. I mean, I know people who have, like, migraine headaches. You know, I only, I've only had a few in my life, but I mean, people who have them all the time. And it's horrible. It's horrible. I wouldn't want to live a day of that. And you're just, you're talking about your brain surgery, like, yeah, you just skipped through it and then you had a little bubbly noise in your head and then everything was just fine and you went to your little programming seminar and everything was la-di-da-di-da. -da -da. So, I mean, if you're going to talk to me about how you survived horror, you're going to have to do a little better than this. Because this didn't sound like horror. You, you just described brain surgery as a, as a romp in the park. And uh, that's not my knowledge of it. That's not what I've seen of people who've had it. Um, it hasn't been no fucking fun at all. But whatever. Fuck you. Another, just another stupid video. Just keep ignoring the fact that not everybody is an insane, silly idiot who will take reckless, silly risks for absolutely no gain. They have no ambition to climb. Again, let's give all... Let's just... They are all silly mountains. Oh, here. Alakin knows. Another asshole. Oh, let's see what he says. Um, if Gary was a bird, he would sing a sad song. Well, whatever. Or a funny one. And he would sit in the rainstorms all by himself, looking sad and lonely. Well, there's no evidence of that either. And he would only 
uh, peck bird seed off the ground under the bird feeder because fighting for a roost would lead to another bird suffering. Well, yeah, I think that would probably be an admirable quality, right? That I wouldn't get into some stupid gang warfare that has absolutely no way of creating a positive end. Just creates more losers than winners. Yeah, that's right. I wouldn't feed a system that creates more losers than winners. He would only fly at night so his tiny wings would not block the sun for even a second off the poor flower that was trying to grow. Well, whatever. I don't sacrifice that much of my life. And he would never eat bugs, only berries and seeds, and he would pull out all, all, the, all his feathers due to anxiety. Well, it is true. I do have anxiety. I do not like um, this world. I mean, you know, as funny as it is, you know, as bad as my stroke was, um, when I was a kid, I had my appendix out, and that was actually an experience that was far worse. I mean, I'd rather have the stroke than just have those eight days. I was in the hospital eight days, was had a little bit of an infection problem, blah, blah, blah. But just being in the hospital for eight days, trapped in that insane asylum, that, that sick, disgusting, shitty place. Yeah, just watching other people suffering, hearing them scream in the night. Um was the most horrid experience of my life, I would think. Those were the worst uh, hours of my life, was being in a hospital and watching the shit that was happening to other kids in that fucking hospital. Um, I just even, you know, it, yeah, no, it was, it was horrific, disgusting, horrid. Um, yeah. And reason enough right there. Just having to look at it would be reason enough for me to say, fuck this shit. <laughs> okay, there's nothing on this planet worth climbing to justify that shit. So yeah, that's who I am. And you obviously, that's who you obviously aren't. You're just a selfish little mountain climber who doesn't care what your pick hits. He doesn't care what your little cleats on your boot doesn't matter how many little feeling creatures it's the, the, the little <clears throat> the little um, needles go poking through their eye yeah it's okay with you because it's all for the glory of your silly pursuit of the mission of the DNA molecule yes let's all revere the DNA the DNA the DNA and the pointless frivolous silly nonsensical, illogical nonsense that is your foolish pursuit of a transient, um, endurable, um, plastic gratification. You suck. This is true. So anyway, so whatever. You, you fuck all you find. <laughs> There's nothing else to say to you people. You're just pieces of shit. You're fucking sadistic pieces of shit. Okay, talking about your heroic battles in the, in the arena, you know, and the lions you slew and you're showing us your battle scars is not impressive. All right, show me your empathy scars. Show me the scars on your, um, um, on your appetite that are showing some respect, some, some real respect for the real grief and pain and misery that has been endured by sentient creatures on this planet. Show me one fucking tear. Yeah. No, I don't think you can pull it off. Selfish fucking lunatics. Yeah, so. There's nothing much to say, right? We just have to wait for the pitchfork war. And then there'll be a there'll be a winner and there'll be a loser, <laughs> you know, and uh, we'll be done with this bullshit.